next lesson, this is now lesson 8. It's all about interpreting the mean and the variance of a discrete random variable. So in this lesson, you're expected to interpret the mean and the variance of a discrete random variable because we're done with calculating the mean and the variance of a discrete random variable. So this time, you're going to interpret the mean. What does the mean and the variance mean? And of course, you're going to formulate decisions based on the mean and variance of a discrete random variable. So let's think about this. So there are instances in your life that you need to make wise decisions. So do you consider decision making as an important skill in your daily living? So of course, the answer is yes. So decision making is very important, especially in doing uh, in facing when we encounter things that needs our immediate decisions so for instance just like you wanted to know or guess about your performance in, ten, in 10 statistics and probability examinations so the scores are given by the teacher in each of the tests what can you say about your performance on the basis of the scores you obtained what is your overall overall performance in these tests? So you want to know if you are really performing well by basing it in your 10 uh, examinations in statistics and probability. So if you have if you determine your average, of course you can you can tell your performance, your overall performance by getting your average. So if you get your average, what will you do? Example, you have an average of 85 or 75 or 95. What will you do next? So, what will you, yes, how will you interpret the results? And what will you do about the results? So, this time, this lesson will help you in your decision making, especially when we are talking about um, averages and especially when getting the mean. So, you can also answer your questions by calculating, of course, the average of the scores as, I will, as what I am saying because it will tell you about the scores you are most close to. So you can easily see the difference of scores in each of the tests from this average score. So the, this difference in scores shows the variability or the differences, the differences of the possible values of the random variable. So when we are talking about differences or variability, we're talking about the variance. So the random variable being the marks, the random variable being the marks or scores in the test. So that's it. That's it. That's what I am talking. That here decision making is an important skill. Another one, so the variance of a random variable shows the variability or the scattering as what we have discussed in our previous lesson. So it shows the distance or the spread out or the scatterings of the random variable. So it shows the distance of a random variable from its mean. We've already learned how to find the mean of the variance of a discrete random uh, discrete probability distribution. Now let's discover how to interpret this data and know the implication of it. So let's take this example number one, which is all about online class. So let me read it to you. Mathematics teacher conducted this online class on a zero, one, two, or three days a week. The probability that he holds a class on a zero day is 3,500. The probability that he holds a class on one day is 2,500. The probability that he holds a class on two days is 1,300. And the probability that he holds a class on three days is 10 hundredths. Now, we're going to find the average or expected value or the mean. Expected value is also the mean of the number of days per week the teacher holds an online class. So with that, so to solve, we're going to have a table. So from our previously from our previous lessons, you already know how to find the mean and the variance. So first, we're, we're going to create a table. So apply the steps and how to determine the mean and variance of a discrete probability distribution. We have here a table. On the first column, we have here the random variable or the x. So here, 0, 
1, 2, and 3. And we also have here the probabilities of x. For 0, we have here for 1, for 2, and for 3. This is online classes and the days of the week. So to get the mean, of course, we are we're going to multiply x by its corresponding probability. So 0 times 3500 is equal to 0. 1 times 2500 is equal to 2500. 2 times 1300 is equal to 1600. And 3 times 1000 is equal to 1300. Next step, we're going to add the probabilities. The, we're going to move to add the results we obtained here. So we get we get the mean. By adding the results we obtained from here, by multiplying x and its corresponding probability, we get the mean. So the mean is the summation of x times t of x. So we add 0 plus 2500 plus 1600 plus 1300 and we get 1 and 50. So, this is already the mean. So, what can you conclude about the mean? So, the expected value or mean is 1 in 1500. So, this means that the mathematics teacher would, on the average, so we're talking about average, would expect to hold online class 1 in 15 days per week. So, the number 1 in 1500 is the long-term average expected value if the mathematics teacher holds online classes week after week after week so if the teacher continues do continue continue doing this online class per week then we have an expected value of mean that he holds an online class one in fifteen hundred days per week so notice that this is this is just a theoretical mean so, if the teacher continues doing classes per week, then we would say that on average, he holds online class 1 in 15 days per week. So, the answer would be closer to 1 in 15 hundreds per week. 1 in 15 days per week. So, example number 2, we have here the roulette wheel. So roulette is a casino game named after the French word meaning little wheel. So I know you're familiar with this. If you ha if you happen to watch movies where there are casinos, so this is played by players who are uh, visiting casinos. Or when we or when the municipal towns fiesta is approaching, there are games placed in plaza. In municipal plaza so we have their roulette game so players place their bets on the colors they want and usually yes this is usually played during the barangay fiesta so in the game players may choose to place bets on either a single number or a single single color this is usually played during the barangay fiesta the better will just choose a single number from 1 to 9. So, if example, you are a player, you will just choose a number from 1 to 9. So, unfortunately, the owner of the roulette wheel made it an unfair wheel with the following probability. So, example, assuming the owner cheated and made the roulette wheel unfair. So, it has the probabilities such as the following. So, we have here the roulette wheel. So, the x, the number of the numbers placed on the roulette so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and we have there the probabilities of the values of x for 1 we have 10 hundreds for 2 we have 10 hundreds for 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 observe that all have equal probabilities except for 9 because the roulette wheel is unfair because the owner made it an unfair wheel. So we're going to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. So to do that, you have to apply what you have learned from our previous lesson. 
So, solution. So, apply the steps on how to find the mean. First, we're going to find the mean. So, we have here, in finding the mean, we just multiply x by the p of x. So, 1 times 10 hundreds, we get 10 hundreds. 2 times 10 hundreds, it's 20 hundreds. 3 times 10 hundreds, it's 30 hundreds. 4 times 10 hundreds is 40 hundreds. 5 times 10 hundreds is 50 hundreds. 6 times 10 hundreds is 60 hundreds. 7 times 10 hundreds is 70 hundreds. 8 times 10 hundreds is 80 hundreds. And 9 times 20 hundreds is 1 and 80 hundreds. So, what we do we do next? What is the next step? So, we simply add the results obtained when we multiply x by p of x. So, by doing that, we, we are determining already the mean. So, we're going to add the values. We get, by adding the values from here, going to here, so we have the result is 5 and 4 tenths. You can check this by using your calculator. So, what does it mean? So, by continuously turning the wheel, so, the better would likely to get, so the wheel would likely to appear in a number 5 and 4 tenths. So, kung sige-sige nga tiyog, tiyog nga tiyog sa wheel, and sige nga untat, or sige taya sa tao, sige man tiyog sa wheel, so it would likely to appear in 5 and 4 tenths. So, if you know the answer, if you are solving the probabilities of each number in the roulette wheel, so you would likely to bet on a number, on an average 5.4, it's between 5 and 6, so it will, you will likely to bet on this number. Again, this is just the average. So, this is just the average or the mean. Next, we're going to find Okay, so this is the interpretation of the mean. So the mean is equal to 5 and 4 tenths. Therefore, it means that the average number that will appear in a roulette wheel is 5 and 4 tenths. What is the implication? So this implies further that although 5 and 4 tenths will never show in the roulette wheel because there is no such 5 and 4 tenths in the roulette wheel, so spinning the wheel many times will result to 5 and 4 tenths. If you are a better, you would like me to, if in order for you to win in the game, you would like me to, um, you would like me to bet a number 5 and 4 tenths or between 5 and 6. Or it's either 5 or 6. So that is just your, um, that, that, that is just a theoretical mean. But of course, we do not know what will happen. This is just the probability. So, the mean of probability distribution is much like the mean of anything else. It answers the question, if you perform this experiment many times, what, what's the likely or average result? So, if you continue doing this experiment many times, ano ang, ang magwa, ano ang mag-appear? What would, what, what is, so what's the likely result? What would appear? So that is the average. We're talking about the average. So we have here how to find the variance. Let's complete the table below. So we are we already have here the table. So recall how to get the variance of the discrete random vari or the or the of the discrete probability distribution. So first we have here the values of x in the first column. Next column, we have here the probabilities of the x, the corresponding probabilities of each value of x. Next, on the third column, we are going to multiply x by its corresponding p of x. So we already did that from our previous solution. And we already get the mean by doing that. So the mean is equal to 5 and 4 tenths. Next is we're going to get the square of x. So how to do that? So here is our x. 
we're going to get the square of each value of x. So, example, 1 squared or 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 2 squared or 2 times 4 is equal to 4. 3 squared or 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 4 squared or 4 times 4 is 16. 5 squared or 5 times 5 is 25. 6 squared or 6 times 6 is 36. 7 squared or 7 times 7 is 49. 8 squared or 8 times 8 is 64. And lastly, 9 squared or 9 times 9 is equal to 81. Next step, we're going to multiply what we got, what, the result we got from getting the square of x by its corresponding probability. Example, we have here the first value of x squared, so x squared, so we have here 1 times its corresponding probability, which is 10 hundredths, so we get 10 hundredths. 4 times 10 hundredths is equal to 40 hundredths. 9 times 10 hundredths is equal to 90 hundredths. 16 times 10 hundredths is equal to 1 and 60 hundredths and so on and so forth. So you do the same thing with the rest of the values of x squared. And you will get this result. So you can use your calculators in your cell phones. So the next step, we're going to add the results we've, we obtained from here. So simply add the results. So by adding, we get the summation of x squared times p of x, which is equal to 36 and 60 hundredths. You can check that by using your calculator. Now, how do we get the variance? Simply substitute the values. So first, we're going to substitute the values of summation of x squared times p of x. So minus mu squared. So by that, we have 36 and 60 hundredths from here. And our mean is 5 and 4 tenths squared. So 5 and 4 tenths squared is equal to 2 in 16 hundredths. So 36 and 60 hundredths minus 2 and 16 hundredths is equal to 7 and 44 hundredths, which is our variance. So that is already our variance. And getting the standard deviation, so you just get the square root of the variance. So our variance is 7 and 44 hundredths, so get the square root. So it would equal to 2 and 73 hundredths. So going back to our previous lesson, we have here... Do we have here a small or large value for standard deviation? We have here a small value. And a small value, having a small value of standard deviation indicates that the distribution of the, the distribution of our values here from the mean are too narrow or we have here, they are concentrated around the mean. So they are closer to the mean. So that's why the distance is too small or uh, small so that's why it, the values are closer to the mean so therefore the variance or sigma squared of the probability distribution is equal to 7 and 44 hundredths while the standard deviation sigma is equal to 2 and 73 hundredths so take note also the formula that we use here is the alternative formula. You can use the other one if you are if you feel comfortable comfortable with it. So in here we only have how many steps? One, two, three, four, five, six, six steps. So this is already our variance in standard deviation. Okay, let's have here your task. For this lesson activity proper so it is found in your learning activity sheets just solve exercise one which is rolling a single and fair die exercise two modules answered in a week and exercise three which is completing the table and do not forget to answer the guide the, also the guide question and of course do not forget to write this in your journal notebook for lesson eight your reflection from head heart bean and back and of course, do not forget to send me your feedbacks 
your comments or your suggestions from the, for the improvement of this video lesson. Thank you. This is the end of our lesson 8.